Hey guys, this is CryptGen, and basically what it is is an easy way to send fully encrypted secure notes or files with just one click. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at how to get CryptGen set up on Linode. So if you'd like to follow along with this tutorial of installing CryptGen on Linode, be sure to head down to the description where you'll find a link to get $100 in free credit for 60 days over on Linode. So just to kind of jump in and take a look at what CryptGen is and what it does, uh, as I mentioned, it does uh, encrypt messages or files so that you can send them securely. And what's cool about CryptGen is you can actually do a couple of different things with this. Uh, obviously, like it says here, you can type in a note like this is a note. Right, simple enough, you could absolutely send that if you wanted to, just by coming down here and clicking create. <clears throat> and here is uh, the link that we would share, of course, in order for this to work, uh, I think appropriately, you would want to get a domain name set up on this, and I will cover uh, the basics of how to do that here in just a little bit, but just know that you will want a domain for this to work. Uh, so here we've got our domain name and or our, our, our URL, rather not our domain name. So what I'm gonna do is just open that up in a new tab and I'm gonna hit enter. And right here it says, click below to show and delete the note if the counter has reached its limits. So basically you can set limits on how many times a note can be viewed or for how long a note is available. There's a toggle for that and I will show that here in just a moment. But basically we're gonna show that and it says, this is a note, right? So there, there is our, uh, our note, our little message that we, we generated there. What I wanna do is actually open this up again. And here we can see that after just one view, that note is no longer available. So let's take a look at how we can kind of modify some things so that we can uh, decide how long or how many views we want a message to be available for. So we're gonna close this. So I'm just gonna come over here, I'm gonna click on new note. And so basically again, we can, you know, we can write, you know, this is our, oops, our note. And then down here, we've got a couple of options that we can start with. The first one is file. You can either do a note or a file. Uh, by default, it is in note mode. But if we wanted to change that to file mode, we could click that, uh, select here, and then go choose the file that we want to share. Uh, you will notice though, uh, in here, it does have a max file size of 2.96 megabytes. Now, that's because that's how it was set up in the Docker Compose. Of course, we'll, we'll take a look at that. Uh, but just know that you can actually set file size restrictions. Uh, and you wanna keep your, your server's RAM uh, allocation in, kind of in, in mind there, because we're gonna store all of this in Redis, or using Redis, so it's all gonna get stored in RAM. So, uh, you know, if you've got 512 megs of RAM, you can't realistically set a file that's a gig, right? You gotta keep things in mind as far as what your resource availability is for something like this. Um, so again, we could, uh, you know, choose a file. We're just gonna use a, a note here, uh, again, just as an example. So this is our note. And then down here, we've got another toggle that is advanced. And it says this note will expire and be destroyed after, in this case, one view, but we could change it to 10 if we wanted to, or uh, if we wanted to make it time sensitive, uh, we could toggle this mode switch right there and have it you know, disappear after 60 minutes or five minutes or however many minutes you wanna set it up for. Um, so it's a very robust, but very simple way to share notes secretly. Now, here's the thing, right? Once you once you sh once you create your note, once you create your your file to share or whatever, there's no way to go back and edit that. Uh, so, if you needed that to not work anymore, probably the best way to handle it would be uh, at least if you've got this set up for a view, uh, kind of a view counter and then and deletion kind of setup, uh, you could just go revisit that file X number of times, however many times you set it up for, and it would automatically delete. Um, so there are just some kind of things to think about there. Uh, there there's, no, uh, there's no user account, there's no, there's, there's no authentication or anything like that for this. Uh, this is meant to be strictly for uh, sharing something privately, discreetly, and easily. So uh, that's, that's kind of the whole gist of how this thing works. So now let's take a quick second to see uh, how it is we can get this set up in Docker. So because we're doing this on Linode, the first thing we wanna do is actually get a Docker server, a Docker Linode set up. So what we're gonna do is come over here to our Linode dashboard. Again, head down to the description to get a link for $100 in free credit to test out Linode for 60 days. Uh, once you've done that, once you're signed in, you can come up right here and click on Create Linode. And then you can uh, head over here to the Marketplace tab and scroll down to where you find Docker and click that just like so. And then we're just gonna scroll down 
Um, and we're not going to do anything with the advanced tabs. We don't need to do anything with that at the moment anyway. Uh, for our image, we've got some options. We can do Debian 10 or 11 or Ubuntu 20.04, at least at the time of recording this video. I'm going to go with Debian 11 just because it's the newest. So that's what we're going to go with. For the region, um, you can kind of just select wherever makes the most sense for you uh, based on your location or the location of whoever might be accessing this. Maybe you've got people all over a country and you want to centralize uh, the, the server location the best you can. Well, make sure to choose the right region for your setup, your needs, whatever. I'm going to select Dallas, Texas. I'm going to come down here to shared CPU. This is a very lightweight container that doesn't do much, so we don't need a lot of resources for it. Now. <clears throat> Earlier, I mentioned that we'll be using Redis for this to store our files and our notes and things like that in RAM. So um, kind of keep that in mind when you select your uh, your server setup here. I'm going to go with the two gig option here just so we've got plenty of room in our in our in our RAM so that we can store files and, and notes and things like that. So I'll select that <clears throat> down here. I'm going to change our label. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, crypt uh, gen like so. No tags, but let's put in a root password. And of course, if you had an SSH key set up on your desktop, uh, whether it's Mac or PC or whatever, uh, you could import that and just connect very, very easily that way. We're going to skip that for the sake of this tutorial, but you could absolutely do that. And then backups. I don't I don't actually know if you need backups for something like this. We're not storing anything long term. So that's at your discretion. If you'd like to do that, I'm going to do private IP. I always like to have a private IP, especially when they're free. Um, so once we've got all of this uh, selected the way we want it, we can just come down here and click on Create Linode. So once this is set up and ready to go, the next thing we'll want to do is actually go in and set up our domain name to point to this Linode. So uh, what we can do is come over here uh, to the left side and we can see domains are right here. So we're going to click that and here we can see I've got dbtech.tips. I'm actually going to copy that. I'm going to delete it because I want to re-add it so that I can attach it to, uh, to this Linode a little easier. So I'm, going to, I'm just going to delete that, click delete. I'm going to create a new domain. I'm going to put that in and put in an uh, email address like so. And then I want to actually insert default records for one of my Linodes. And I'm going to select Cryptgen just like so and create domain. That's going to put in all of the A records and, and that sort of thing we need for the domain to work on uh, Linode. The other thing you want to keep in mind is, of course, you will need to have a domain pointed to Linode. So let's take a quick look at that in case you're not familiar with that process. So depending on where you buy your domain name, you're going to have a few different options. Things are going to look a little bit differently. So what you want to take a look at is your authoritative name servers or your DNS settings for your domain. And over here, we can see that my authoritative name servers are set up as ns1.linode.com all the way through ns5.linode.com. Now, once you make those changes, it could take 24 to 48 hours for, uh, for those changes to take effect and for the domain to be available. So when you do this, just give yourself some time, be patient and, and give this chance give this a chance to do what it needs to do in the background. But once you've got that set up, your domain should work over on Linode uh, now that we've got it set up with our Linode container. So now that we have our domain set up over here on Linode, what we're gonna do is come back over here to our Linodes. Uh, here we can see that our CryptGen uh, uh, Linode is up and running. We've got uh, an IP address here. Uh, what I wanna do is actually click this, open it up and come over here to where it says SSH access and click on the little copy icon right there. And then we're gonna open up our uh, Windows terminal, whichever terminal uh, you like to use is perfectly fine. Okay, so here I've got my command prompt up. What I'm gonna do is just paste in SSH root at my IP address and hit enter saying, hey, you've never connected to the server. Are you sure that's what you wanna do? Uh, absolutely, that's what I wanna do here. So I'm gonna type in yes and hit enter. And I'll put in the root password that I designated when I set up this Linode. And then I'll press enter. And here we go. Now we are set up and ready to go. Now, the next thing we want to do is actually grab the Docker Compose file that we're going to use for this setup. Now, you could do this through Portainer if you're familiar with Portainer and wanted to get that installed. You could absolutely install Portainer and then do everything through a graphical user interface. However, for the sake of making it look extra techy, uh, we're going to do this in the command line. So let's follow along and do that next. Uh, what we'll do is we'll head over to Cryptgen's, uh, well, Cupcake Army's Cryptgen uh, GitHub repository. And right here, we can actually see the repository or the Docker Compose that we're going to use. Uh, we're going to copy that just like so. Uh, of course, all of this will be linked in the description down below. We're going to come back over to here and we're going to say nano because that's the, the text editor I like to use. We're going to say docker-compose.yml. Oops, YML. And then we're just going to paste this in here. Now, I'm going to come up to the top and delete uh, this first line. 
I don't need that. There we go. So we're going to use a version 3.8 because that's what the developer decided this would work best with. So we're going to use that. Our services, we've actually got a couple of different services here. The first one will be a Redis service. Now that's the, 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 the application that's going to store our data in RAM, our random access memory for faster access. And because RAM is volatile, uh, it can't be stored there long term, so it's even more secure that way. So uh, our first service is Redis. We're going to use the Redis 7 Alpine image there. And below that, we've got our app. Our app in this case is going to be Cupcake Army's Cryptgen latest uh, Docker image. And then we've got, it depends on Redis, so it shouldn't work unless uh, Redis is up and running. Uh, below that, we've got an environmental variable of 4 megabytes. I'm actually going to change this to 16 like so. And then we've got port 80 uh, on the on the outside of the container and port 5000 on the inside of the container. You could absolutely change port 80 to whatever you'd like it to be. So we could actually deploy this just as it is. However, the problem is we wouldn't necessarily get an SSL certificate to uh, help with the security of this setup. So what I want to do is actually take this one step further and add a reverse proxy like Nginx proxy manager to the setup mix here. So let's take a look at what that would actually look like to to expand on this Docker Compose. So what I want to do was actually come up back to, to the top here and I just well, I want to delete the whole thing but that's again that was what a, a generic a basic setup would look like so if we come back over to here and let's paste this in so this is kind of my personal modified version of that docker compose uh, up here at the top we do have a uh, version 3 version 3 will be perfectly fine for this uh, again we've got our services in this case I've added nginx proxy manager to the mix here and we've got you know jc21 slash nginx proxy manager with the latest tag on there um, and basically what this will do is allow us to uh, to again like I said add a, an SSL to this again to increase the security of our setup and add that SSL sell that HTTPS to our URL. So uh, below that, we've got a restart policy of unless stopped. Uh, our ports, we're going to use ports 80 and 443. Those are going to be for traffic. Uh, basically, the, they will they will help us uh, route traffic where it needs to go on our little setup here. Uh, port 81 will actually be for the dashboard for uh, for our Nginx Proxy Manager instance. Uh, we're going to have a couple of volumes for Nginx Proxy Manager. We're going to have a data volume and a Let's Encrypt volume. Uh, we can leave those as they are, or if you wanted to, you could map those to a specific location if you prefer to do that just by modifying uh, this area right here. Uh, in front of the colon there, again, for both of those volumes. Uh, we're gonna attach this to a network. Uh, we're gonna call this Nginx Proxy Manager underscore default. It's long, but it's what was in my notes and that's just what we're gonna run with. Uh, below that, of course, that's all of the Nginx Proxy Manager stuff. That's just quick and easy for that. Below that, we've got uh, our Redis image, again, with Redis uh, version seven Alpine. And again, we've got this network down here of Nginx Proxy Manager default. Uh, again, we've got CryptGen. All of this is the same, except we've added uh, our network of Nginx proxy manager underscore default uh, to this. And then uh, below that, we've got a network declared down here of Nginx proxy manager underscore default. Uh, so we're going to generate that network first and then attach all of this stuff to it if everything goes according to plan. So let's do uh, control uh, O and enter and control X. And we can do Docker uh, compose up dash D and hit enter. And uh, if everything goes right, we don't run into any errors, we'll be up and running in just a few minutes. Okay, so here we are just a couple of minutes later. It looks like everything deployed as we wanted it to. So uh, let's actually head over to our uh, to our Linode. Let's grab um, our IP address right here and let's paste that in there and go to port 81. Again, this will allow us uh, to get logged into Nginx Proxy Manager. Uh, this, I believe, will be admin at admin.com. And the password should be change me. Uh, I was wrong. So I was wrong. It's admin at example.com and sign in. There we go. All right. So it wants us to change this. So let's just do that. And then it'll want us to change our password, which I appreciate. So once we've changed our password, we can go ahead and click on save. And so basically we're, we're set up and ready to go. The first thing I want to do though, uh, there's, well, two, two, we're going to do two things simultaneously somehow. Uh, we want to figure out what subdomain we want to use for this. I'm just going to set up a subdomain that's share.dbtech.tips. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is head back over here to Linode. We're going to go to domains. We're going to go to dbtech.tips. And what we're going to do is add a CNAME record right here. And I'm going to uh, call this share. And then our alias will just be the at symbol and we'll click save. So we've got share.dbtech.tips. I'm just gonna copy that. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is head over back over here uh, to Nginx Proxy Manager, go to SSL certificates. We're gonna add an SSL, SSL certificate by clicking the little pink button right here and then do let's encrypt. We're gonna do a share dot uh, our domain name like so and hit enter. And then we're gonna test server reachability. 
Ooh, all right. Well, let's let's try that again. Well, then I tell you what. What we're gonna do instead of that, then, oops, we're gonna we're gonna cancel that. We're actually just do this as an A record instead. So uh, we're gonna grab the IP address there. Do that. Our host name um, will be share, and we'll paste that in. Click save, uh, and then now let's try this. There we go. Had to do an A record for some reason. That's fine, no worries. So now that we've got that set up, what we can do uh, is make sure that our email address is correct. Uh, we're going to agree to the terms as long as you agree to the terms and we'll click save. Okay, so now we've got our SSL certificate set up. So what we'll do now is head over to hosts, go to proxy host, uh, add a proxy host. We're gonna do uh, share.dbtech.tips and hit enter. Our scheme we're gonna leave is HTTP because we don't have an SSL actually in the container. We're gonna do that external. So we're gonna leave this as HTTP. Our forward IP address, I'm gonna again, come back over here and grab this. I'm gonna paste that in. Uh, we're gonna put this on port, I believe 5,000, I think is what we did uh, there just a moment ago. Uh, we can go ahead and cache all of this, block common exploits, those sorts of things. Our SSL will be uh, share. And we're just gonna check all the boxes and click save. And now if I click this, okay. So because we put everything on the same network, using that IP address isn't going to work. And I wanted to demonstrate that on purpose uh, just so that we could kind of see something fail. Uh, so they understand that we can do this a different way. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is actually uh, close that. <clears throat> what I wanna do is, uh, is I'm actually gonna clear my screen. We're gonna do a Docker PS like so, just to make sure everything is up and running. All of that looks perfectly fine. So what we'll do now that we've proven that our Docker containers are up and running, do Docker inspect, and then we're gonna do uh, the, I, or the, the, the container uh, ID right here for Cryptgen, which was 55290CFACF9E, uh, like so. Oh, oh, darn it. Uh, make sure you put a space in there, like so. And it looks like our IP address is 172.18.4. Uh, this is what we're looking for right there. So let's come back over to here and let's edit this just so that we've got the right IP address in there. Oops, like that and click save and then click there. And here we go, just that quickly and easily, we've got this set up and ready to go. So that's how easy it is to get CryptGen up and running using an SSL on Linode with uh, Nginx Proxy Manager as our reverse proxy. Of course, for security reasons, uh, you wouldn't want to share the uh, IP address of your Linode, just again, for security reasons, uh, because having that is, is similar to having, uh, having access to somebody else's social security number. You can do a lot of damage uh, with an IP address if security isn't in place the right way. Um, so I just kind of wanted to cover that real quick. Make sure you only share the URLs to your containers when you're sharing containers with other people. Please don't share the IP address of those containers. It's just bad practice. But I think that kind of covers everything I wanted to cover in this video. Of course, if you've got questions or comments, definitely leave those in the comment section down below. Again, you can find a link to uh, Linode in the description where you'll have a chance or you'll be able to get $100 in free credit for 60 days to check out their service and just kind of uh, you know, putter around and see what you can do with Linode. Uh, but with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today and I'll talk to you in the next video.